Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 45 of Perfect Inspiration. My name is Brian Matias. So uh, this week's episode is all about perspective. Uh, it's something that's really important because uh, when I uh, first visited uh, Badwater Basin in Death Valley National Park, I had this kind of idea of specifically how I was going to photograph it, and it was all about perspective. Uh, now before we begin, let's actually jump in, and uh, I have a video that I recorded of uh, me and my friend Brian Bonham right out here in Badwater Basin talking about perspective. So let's check that out first. All right, so we're here with my very good friend, Brian Bonham. We're actually in the Badwater Basin in Death Valley uh, National Park. So, Brian, today we were all shooting uh, these beautiful geometric shapes. You can probably yep. see them in the background here. Um, and we're killing beautiful light right now to do this interview. <laughs> but tell me about, because uh, I had in my head when I first got here that I'd get on the gorilla pod and get like as low as possible right. to shoot this. Um, was did that work out for you or was it nope like... I went low and the first thing I noticed was I lose the definition of the shape of the the geometric uh, patterns that the salt develops here so went back up brought the tripod up to uh, eye level and shot more down with a wider lens to get more of the shape a little definition so you could actually see the uh, form the, like the, the, the salt. Yeah, yeah you get shadows you get definition you get the shapes Otherwise, if you're too low, you just get the walls and yeah, and you so lose that, that. Totally, and that's really something to consider because, I mean, up until we got here, I was thinking about this. I'm like, I'm a, I brought a gorilla pod, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, we're going to get really low. And totally, it's all about a matter of perspective. And so uh, to get all of these geometric shapes, you kind of want to go a little bit higher. So yeah. thanks get for that, that Brian. Right. You're I welcome. appreciate that. Yep. All right, so now that you have an idea of what it was like standing in Badwater Basin, I want to show you the actual image. This was the first image. This is kind of what I thought I was envisioning uh, when I had my camera on my gorilla pod way down. Um, and you can see how, yeah, we filled the frame with this one geometric shape, but you have no sense of depth. You lose everything else. Now watch what happens. This, I took this one shot. I looked at the, the uh, back of the camera and I just, it's like, all right, well, that doesn't work. Um, and I just kind of lifted the camera up a bit. So again, you know, here to here. And you get all of that shadow play and the nice highlights and everything's really cool. Uh, and so I also have some images just to give you an idea, you know, of what we were doing. Uh, here's Brian and he's got an Oculus, uh, which is uh, a crystal, kind of like a pure glass ball and it uh, inverts anything that's in there. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, and uh, there's Matt Kleskowski shooting. So this is kind of the scene here. Um, here is Brian to give you a better idea of what we were doing standing out here and it's just it's pretty crazy uh this kind of salt flat um there's a close-up of matt uh and i i really dig the reflection of the basin in uh, his sunglasses uh and just really quickly um there's my friend amy hayden and my friend ricardo lagos so uh just to give you more of a, a in-depth look of what it was like shooting here all right so now you have a, an idea of actually what it looked like uh when we were photographing here um, just to give you some perspective, let's go to uh, Google Maps. So this is uh, a portion of Death Valley National Park in California. We stayed over here um, in Stovepipe Wells, uh, and then we drove all the way here. And if we zoom in, uh, you can see the specific part of the salt flats that we shot in. And that is from my GPS unit that was on my camera. So that was exactly where I was standing uh, when I photographed this image. And we were actually photographing this way because uh, in this image, that's where the sun was. So uh, if you go back to the video and we zoom out, we were shooting over this mountain range over here and the sun was setting. So that's kind of the perspective we got. Um, this shot was taken maybe 30 to 45 minutes, maybe a little, maybe an hour after the video was recorded, um, well after the sun had set and we were going into the blue hour. Um, and it was a long exposure. Uh, let's see the specifics here. This was a 180 second exposure at f4.5 ISO 200. So I had my uh, Lee big stopper on, um, my 10 stop neutral density filter and um, just photographed it that way. So as far as um, the perspective goes, um, as you read in the text uh, and in the video, as you saw in the video just now, I was all about getting low um, really, really low, and it just didn't work out for me. Um, getting low, all you would see would be these kind of the walls of the uh, formations, as Brian had mentioned, and it just, you didn't get a sense of depth. 
And so as photographers, that's something we always have to kind of keep visualizing. And it, it goes in extremes. On one extreme, I was way down on my knees, um, all the way down uh, with my camera getting as low as possible, just a few centimeters above the ground. Um, the other matter of perspective is um, standing upright, holding the camera to your face, you know, at normal height and just shooting. That's also detrimental because that's what everyone is typically used to. That's how people are used to seeing the world is standing upright at eye level. And so perspective is important because you want to make sure that you uh, offer up um, an intriguing view of what you're photographing. So. Let's begin editing this image here. I'm going to start by going to the develop module. Usually um, I don't do much in the develop module before I start stylizing. But you can see here how this image is uh, really dark. And I want to give it a little bit of a boost uh, in terms of getting it to a good starting line. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus right here on these four sliders first. Under the uh, basic pane in the develop module, there are four sliders. Highlights, shadows, white, and black points. Now you can see also in the histogram. It's it's really important, I can't stress this enough with imagery, um, especially digital imagery, that you pay attention to your histogram. Because by looking at this histogram, I can see that I've got this huge gap going towards the, in the highlight area. You can see how from here to here, there's nothing. Now I also know that my uh, 5D Mark III camera, which I was shooting in RAW, stores a ton of information. So I've got room over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the white point. Basically, I want to set the white point so that the edge of the histogram over here meets the end where the highlights start to clip. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to press and hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC while dragging on these sliders. So, by pressing and holding the Option key, I'm going to click on the white slider and you see the image go black. Now, I'm going to start dragging to the right. So, first thing, look at the histogram. You see how as, as I'm dragging, the histogram's creeping towards the end there? That's good. I'm basically going to drag until I start to see some blown out highlights. And I'm going to just ease on back just a bit. All right, so we've set our white point. I'm going to do the same thing with the black point. With the black point, we're already uh, blowing out, or clipping shadows rather. So I'm going to press and hold the Option key, and I'm going to drag the black point outward as well. All right, with that, I'm going to go to the highlights and shadows. I'm going to start with the highlights, press and hold the Option key, and I'm going to bring them out just a bit. And then the same thing with the shadows. I'm going to bring out the shadows just a bit. Until I start to see that there's a little bit of a point over here. Now, with that done, I'm going to go to the overall exposure slider, and I'm going to make the overall scene a bit brighter. You can see now that by doing that, we've essentially recovered shadows, but we're still blowing out highlights. So I'm going to go back to the highlight slider, and I'm going to bring that back. I'm also going to go to the white point and bring that back a bit. So now, here we go. Look at the histogram. I'm going to press and hold the backslash key. The backslash key is typically above the enter or return key on your keyboard. And what that does is it brings you back to the original image, the image before you did any Lightroom uh, develop module stylization. So this is the original image. And with just four or five sliders, you know, we brought the image out to a much more pleasing view. And this is much easier for me to start stylizing. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the image to Perfect Effects 4 uh, so that we can begin giving this image a specific look. So to do that, I like to go to the File menu, plug in Extras, and then select Perfect Effects 4. All right, so in Perfect Effects 4, when I'm looking at this image, if there's one kind of theme that jumps at me right away, it's cool. You know, it's very blue. And the reason for that is because um, the Big Stopper, my Lee uh, Big Stopper filter that was on the lens or on the front of the lens, tends to cool uh, the image in terms of white balance. And so what I want to do is I want it to actually be warm. I really want to accentuate this layer of orange and yellow over here from the sunset. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the landscape category and I'm going to apply Autumn. Now watch what Autumn does. You can see what I'm focusing on right now is the sky. And I really love what Autumn does here to the sky. So I'm going to bring the strength down to zero. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this almost all the way to 100%. Uh, yeah, right around here, about 91%. I absolutely love what it does here. However, I don't want it to apply to the foreground. I'm going to treat the foreground totally with a different uh, effect. So I'm going to take the masking bug from the tool well, and I'm going to click in the image, and that invokes the bug. 
Now I'm going to take the bug and I'm going to drag it so that it's horizontal, not vertical. And I'm going to bring it down here. Now I like to see the mask, where it's being applied. So for me, I'm going to go to the this black box on the lower left of the screen here. I'm going to click it and I'm going to go to mask red. And so it gives me an overlay pattern of uh, where the mask is being applied. What I want to do is I really want to control the mask so that it ends as close to the horizon line as possible. To do that, I'm going to go to the feather over here and I'm going to drag it in. And you're going to start to see a harder line appear. And so I'm going to stop right around there. A very soft feather, but you can see now that uh, if I go back to the mask view and go to after, which is the original view, you can see we now have a nice clean mask. Now I'm going to click add to create a new effect layer and I'm still going to stay in the landscape category. I'm going to go to Golden Hour Enhancer. Now I'm only concerned about the foreground. So with Golden Hour Enhancer, I really like the kind of tone it gives to the foreground. Uh, again, I'm going to bring it down to zero. And you can see just how blue it is. I'm going to bring it out and you can, it kind of neutralizes that blue a bit while giving it a warmer tone. So about 85, 86% is good. Now, I basically want the effect to apply just to the foreground and not to the sky. I can apply another masking bug to achieve that, or what I can do is I can go back to the Autumn effect, go to the Mask menu, and select Copy Mask. Now I'll go back to the Golden Hour Enhancer layer, back to the Mask, and select Paste Mask. Now here's the thing. This Paste Mask just applied the Golden Hour Enhancer to the sky because that's what we did with the Autumn layer, is we only applied it to the sky. What I want, in fact, is to apply it to the complete opposite. So to flip it, all I need to do is go to the mask menu and select invert mask. And that flips the mask right away. So now I have autumn in the sky, golden hour enhancer in the foreground. I'm going to click add and apply one last effect. Still in the landscape category, I'm going to scroll down to magic sunset. Magic sunset is going to give me kind of a contrast and local contrast boost. So when I get it, you can see that 100% it's very, very harsh. So I'm going to bring that down to zero, and I'm only going to apply about maybe 30%. Just adds a nice uh, little bit of bite to the image. I'm going to click Preview on the bottom left here, the checkbox, so you can see the original image, and then the image that we've stylized. Totally different. Now that I'm done, I'm going to click Apply, and return back to the Develop module in Lightroom so that we can finish things off. All right, so we're back in Lightroom, and here was our uh, edited image from Perfect Effects 4. This is our original image. Uh, or rather, this was the image that we uh, worked on in Lightroom to get the proper tonality, and then now we're stylizing. So I'm going to go to the Develop module here and just kind of finish things up. Uh, I want to bring out a little bit more detail. It's a bit still too dark here in the foreground. So I'm going to go to the Graduated Filter tool here at the top, and I'm going to first select Exposure, and I'm going to brighten that up. Actually, that's about good right there, about 0.25. Now I'm also going to bring out contrast a bit, and I'm going to bring out a lot of clarity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll upward, and you can see how we're getting some more detail there in the foreground, which is good. Uh, now I'm actually going to make it a bit brighter. That's one of the things I love about um, both the uh, graduated filter and the adjustment brush tool in Lightroom is, after you make the selection, I can go back here still and just adjust it on the fly. So here I'm going to make it just a bit brighter. Um, all right, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click New, and for the sky, I'm going to add a lot of contrast and some saturation because I really want those colors to pop. So I'm going to drag that down. And then one last thing I'm going to do is I want to add just a little bit of a cool tone at the very top. So one more. I'm going to select temp for temperature and I'm going to make it cool and I'm going to drag that down just a bit and you can see how just up here we have a little bit of a hint of blue and I really like that. All right so with those filters done and again, if I hit the backslash key, that's the image straight out of Perfect Effects. That's with some correction. I'm going to apply some uh, global contrast, uh, global clarity, uh, and just a bit of vibrance. And for the most part, I'd say this is pretty much done. What I might do here is go to the shadows, press and hold the Option key, and bring out some of the shadow detail, and bring out the black point just a bit. There, that's good. That's really nice. So again, one more time, the backslash key shows you the image out of perfect effects and then the finishing touches in Lightroom.
All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video um, and just getting an idea of what it was like shooting in Death Valley at the Bad Order Basins. I hope you get a better idea of how important it is to always keep perspective in the forefront of your mind when you're out shooting. So with that, I want to thank you, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week for episode number 46. Thank you.